Kentucky, the Catholic Church is softening its stance on same-sex unions in a radical change in policy. As KTV's Christian Catherine reports, Pope Francis has now formally approved blessings for same-sex couples. In a papal declaration, Pope Francis has given the go-ahead for priests to offer blessings for what he calls couples in irregular situations and couples of the same sex. Any such blessing would not be a formal blessing as for a marriage, which the church still says is between a man and a woman. The document goes on to say a blessing for a same-sex union is not a formal liturgical rite, but that the church should recognize those who humbly turn to God. When I heard the news, I was honestly a bit surprised because I knew it was bound to happen. I knew that this was something that was bound to take place, that same-sex unions or couples will be allowed to be blessed. However, I did not expect it to already happen in the end of 2023, because it was only back in 2021 when Pope Francis said that same-sex unions can never be blessed because God doesn't bless sin. And now here we are at the end of 2023, and what has happened? That has all completely somehow just fallen away. So for me, this is kind of like a big, big, big realization and reminder again, even though I am a Protestant, that you should never place anyone else's word above God's word. We should never put someone else's authority above the authority that we put scripture. And I also just to be clear that according to Catholic tradition, the marriage is still between a husband and a wife. And also the formal blessing can only take place between the husband and a wife. However, this is an informal blessing. So let me give you an example. Let's say there is a LGBTQ couple and they see their friendly neighbor bishop and they come to him and say, please bless our union. And then the priest can give a blessing. And so that is kind of where it's at. It's not like anything formal or anything. But as you can see from 2021, where this was said to be unacceptable to now suddenly this is being accepted and said that it can be done. We can see kind of how it is pushing a bit more to the liberal side, where if you start to compromise on one thing, then you will start to compromise more and more and more. Where does the compromise end? For example, if you took Adam and Eve and you put them here today, they would be like, whoa, how did all of this come here? How did we get all these massive buildings? What even is a phone? All these things. But because it took us time to build all these stuff, these buildings and everything didn't just come here in a day. We see how technology improved throughout time. We kind of got used to the growth rate of technology. So we look at all this stuff as normal because we kind of anticipated them coming because of the fact of how technology has been growing throughout the years. But if you, for example, think of Adam and Eve and you put them here, they will be shocked because not all of this is new for them. So that's why we can kind of see this evil demonic kind of thing behind this is that once you start being able to pull the strings of compromise then you can go a lot further than initially thought so for example when you go back to technology we can say that for example the start point is saying that the church the catholic church should not allow uh, the blessing of same-sex union so then they will say okay let's just do it informal then you do the next step, we can do it formal. Then the next step, okay, we can even go as far as to marry them. And then, you know, the next step is there can be LGBTQ, priests, bishops, all of those stuff. So you can kind of just put them in there. So you kind of end up at this place where you either kind of start to do gradual compromises, which is currently going on. When you look back at all these gradual compromises, you'll actually look back to where we started and think, how do we end up here? Because it was done gradually. And that's how the devil works. He works in compromise. And when it happens gradually, you don't always see what is happening because it's so moving so slow. And this is why we should be on the lookout for things like this. Because this is a massive, massive development when we think about the Catholic Church actually compromising on this topic. And it's so strange that according to Catholics or Catholicism, the Pope is infallible. He cannot make mistakes. And that is something that's very unbiblical because the Bible says that we have all fallen short of the glory of God. We have all sinned. And that's why we all need a Savior who is Jesus Christ. So if you believe that the Pope is infallible, 2023 and 2021 completely contradict that. Because the Pope either was fallible when he said that same-sex unions should never be blessed. Or he's fallible now where he says that they can be blessed. So you can't have it both ways. Unfortunately... What he said in 2021 doesn't match with what he's saying in 2023. So when you kind of match those two things together, you have to say that either one is 
a lie or the other one is, is a truth. And it really comes back to that old saying where it says that if it was a sin 2,000 years ago, it's still a sin today. These are moral issues, which means that if they were a sin in Jesus' time, then they should still be a sin today. You cannot say, no, it was a sin or it wasn't the right time to do this back in 2021, but now is the correct time. That's not how it works. That's not how sin works. Sin is constant. It is something that is wrong in the eyes of God, and that's why whatever time you commit that sin, it remains a sin. So again, this is just a very important reminder for us that when we see someone contradicting the word of God, that is a red flag for us, an instant reminder or bell ringing in our ears telling us that we should not listen to this person. No one is above the word of God. What is your authority? Is it the word of God or is it the word of fallible people? And that's also why Catholics, if you're watching this video, please don't make the mistake of thinking that the Pope or any person for that reason is infallible because we have all fallen short of the glory of God. And also, my brother and I actually have our Bachelor's of Divinity our degree at the University of Pretoria. So we have studied theology. And I just want to tell you that there is something very, very messed up taking place in the church right now. Because we study theology, which means that we studied with a lot of people who want to be pastors. And let me tell you, in those universities, at the University of Pretoria, where we studied all over the rest of the universities in South Africa, Europe it's even way worse, even in the US. Liberal theology is the main source of information from which you are being taught. I mean, all the lectures, every single one, I personally can't even think of one now that isn't a liberal theologian who doesn't really truly believe in liberal theology. And I can only name a few of the students who actually came out of graduating and actually still believe the way that the Bible says we should believe. Most of them actually turn out to delve into this idea of liberal theology themselves. So you kind of get these the people who want to be pastors, then they go to the Christian college to, you know, get the degree. And like, you know, Catholic priests do, like today's pastors do, everyone go through these colleges, these university, Christian universities. And when they go there, they're kind of taught liberal theology at the university and they, they are kind of submerged with this. All the professors, all the lecturers, they all teach liberal theology and then they come out. What do they know? They know liberal theology. So what do they bring to all the church meetings and everything? Liberal theology. So that's what we see from all the way down, from the people who are just coming out of graduating from Bible college or uh, to become pastors, they have all been indoctrinated with liberal theology. So what do they do when they come into the churches? They bring those ideas forward. So now we will see this push up of this liberal theology all the way to the top. So that's what I'm telling you now. We should be very careful. It's more important now than ever to stand on the truth of the word of God because there will be opposition from the pulpit against the word of God. And I know this from experience. Like I said, I have studied theology. I know what these people believe. So I want to warn you. Please make sure that you know what the Word of God says so that when you hear someone contradicting the Word of God, you will know this is a person that I do not want to listen to because liberal theology is taking over. It's taking over there at Vatican City and it's coming all the way from the Christian universities and going to all the local churches in the area. So please find yourself a biblical church and make sure to test every single spirit that is coming at you. You need to understand and actually spend time in the Word of God to compare it to what the person you're listening to is actually saying. So please make sure that you're prayed up and that you always read your Bible so that you know when someone is preaching something that is contradicting the Word of God. God bless.